Here I have a heap of MIDI data inside Reaper, but all the audio is being generated by VCV Rack. In this video, I'll show you how to wire all of this together and a couple of tricks to help you make the most of it. First off, we're going to need another piece of free software called Loop MIDI. This creates a loopback device that will allow both Reaper and VCV to communicate over a MIDI channel. So in Loop MIDI, you can just create a new port, call it whatever you want. And in VCV Rack, it's pretty easy. You just grab a MIDI CV and you select Reaper VCV Bridge. And then for each different channel that you want to, every, each different track that you want to send, select a different channel. So here I've got channel one for the pad, channel two for the bell, channel three for the bass, etc., etc. In Reaper, there's a little bit more you need to do. First off, go to Options Preferences, and in MIDI Devices, make sure that for your MIDI output, the bridge is enabled. And then you may also need to disable your audio device inside Reaper if VCV is fighting with it to try and actually be able to play audio. This will probably happen if you're using ASIO, so you just disable in Reaper. Then in our Reaper tracks, we create a new track, we set the input to MIDI, and we turn on record monitoring and then we click the route button and in the MIDI hardware output select bridge and send to whichever channel this track needs to go to. So this is the pad, goes to channel one. This sets us up such that if we record the pad, we can hear it as we play and then we can record it as we would any normal MIDI instrument. One issue with disabling the audio in Reaper is you no longer get the metronome click. So to recreate that, we're going to have to do it ourselves. So here, currently muted, I'll unmute it. I've created a track just with MIDI, MIDI notes on every quarter note. And then I've routed that to channel five. And in VCV, I have a MIDI CV listening to channel five that's just running through a clave sound. And what that gets us is a sound is a metronome click. As well as sending through note data, Reaper also sends through things like the mod wheel, which we can access in the MIDI CV. So here I've got the mod wheel attached to the frequency of the pad filter. But that's pretty cool. One thing you can do in Reaper is actually automate that mod wheel rather than having to record it yourself. The way to do this is to grab the rear control MIDI BST, select mod wheel here, touch it, hit param, and then it will show up an envelope for that control. And as you can see, you can use this to control all sorts of MIDI, all sorts of MIDI parameters. Here I've used it to open up the filter during this rise. And going through and just using an envelope for this was much easier than trying to record it with a mod wheel myself. A couple of tricks now for the drums. First off, what I'm doing here, I've actually created two different tracks, one for drums, one for drum fills. This is really just a sequencing thing. It means I can have my drum loops up the top and then just trim off the loop and throw in the fill whenever I want it. So here we've got a little. Snare sort of fill there. And you can just route both tracks to the same channel. So that's the channel four, that's the channel four. It all just works. The trick, you just need to make sure that you don't overlap uh, different parts. Inside VCV Rack, rather than using MIDI CV, I'm using a MIDI gate where each note outputs to one of these outputs. And these notes are assignable. You can, uh, if I hit record, hit record monitoring on drums, come down here, click a button, and then press a note, you can customize it. Here I just picked the random ones. It might be nice to align this with the MIDI standard, but I'm just using random notes for the different drums here. The other thing I've done here is if you right click on MIDI gate and select velocity mode, then these become control voltages rather than just triggers. So you can use them to control the amplitude either using VCAs or into your mixer. Um, I'm using more VCAs here than you would expect because I had some problems with the CV inputs on 8mix, but I was probably just doing it wrong. Another trick you can do for drums and actually parts in general is quantize them. So here we have a bass part. You can select all the notes, press Q, 
uh, and you can see there it sort of shuffled them a little and changed the note endings. Don't want to do that in this case, but it'll help align it up to the grid and just make things sound a lot snappier. That's all I've got for today. Try it out and let me know how you go in the comments.